What is good YouTube and welcome back to the Sauce Factory with me Kevin Cruz and in this video I'm going to show you all the secrets you need to know to be a successful finisher at the basket without having to overly rely on powerful dunk animation packages so I'm going to teach you the secrets of how to trap your defender, why layups are more powerful than you think, the different types of layups you should use in different situations, and how to finish at the basket efficiently in NBA 2K23. So my first tip is consider turning on layup timing to be able to nail tightly contested layups. And as you can see here in these next few clips, these layups are at a 60% contested rate. And because I have practiced layup timing, I'm very successful at finishing through contact. Alright, so starting with the basics, hold the right stick up to initiate a normal layup. Hold it up left or up right if you want to finish with either hand. This is a great way to choose how you will finish depending on where the contest will come from. So while you might think basic layups are boring, this is actually the way in which you activate the powerful bully layup. If you got a guy with a bully badge such as Giannis Antetokounmpo, hold the left stick towards the basket and hold the right stick up left, up or up right to finish with a bully layup and activate the bully badge. This is a great way to take advantage of your strength even against strong defenders like LeBron right here. But even without the bully badge, you can also use badges such as Fearless Finisher to finish at the basket even without activating that bully badge. So as you can see right here, Giannis gives AD a hezzy, gets him in that ride animation and we're finishing away from the basket so the bully badge doesn't activate but Fearless Finisher does. So new to NBA 2K23 are scoop layups which is done by holding the right stick left or right to finish with a quick scoop layup. These scoop layups are very effective in avoiding your defender or breaking away from your defender and quickly finishing at the basket. So here as you can see from Luka Doncic, we avoid Nick Claxton's chase down block by activating a nice quick scoop layup. Use a quick scoop layup to get the ball away from your defender and even avoid the help defense that's coming at you. See right here, it's quick enough to avoid KP or Kyle Kuzma right there. You'll get different variations of scoop layups depending on the distance and the angle in which you activate the scoop layup. So you can get a scoop layup going away from the basket which will avoid defenses and help defense such as this move right here. I mean just look at this quick scoop layup and how it avoids KP's help defense. So after we beat Will Barton off of this filthy move, I don't go towards the basket, I go away from it, I hold the right stick left and look at that floater scoop layup that avoids that KP block. Now if you use the inside hand to activate a quick scoop layup, you can actually activate an underhand scoop layup which quickly avoids the defense of BAM. Try also playing around in a post up situation and you can activate a scoop layup out of an up and under. So while holding the left stick towards the basket, pull the right stick down to initiate a floater. This is a great way to avoid help defenses, especially against aggressive shot blockers. This quick floater right here is the only shot that will work against KP in this situation. So here we use the Jason Tatum target dribble combo to blow by Tobias Harris and we see Joel Embiid but we execute a floater to avoid his help defense. Now you can get different sets of floater animations depending on the angle of your movement, how far you are from the basket, and if you're moving sideways or laterally, you can initiate a floater while moving to the side which gives you these sets of different floater animations. So out of that mid post or low post driving towards the middle is exactly when I want to activate these side floaters to give you different kinds of floater animations. These are just new sets of animations that 2K is giving us to diversify the way we finish at the basket. As you can see right here, none of these are forced. And you can even perform these nice little running hooks which in my opinion are a little bit slow but if you get them at the right situation as you can see right here, even with CP3 you can actually be successful. So with the ball on your left hand, quickly tap the right stick from left to right to perform a Euro step layup. So Euro step layups are a great way to avoid incoming help defenses, break away from your defender, and even anticipate contact as you move towards the basket. So court awareness is important when you're executing a Euro step layup because you don't want to execute that Euro step and just head towards the basket. As you can see right here, I can see that the right side of the floor is open and the help will come from the left as I drive left. I initiate a Euro step layup moving to the right which avoids help defenses along the way. I also recommend using this when you got a defender moving backwards. Using that Euro step layup with slithery finisher will trap them in a nice contact animation and you will get an uncontested layup. 
and you can even use a euro step layup if you're caught in a ride animation to break away from your defender as you can see right here caught in that ben simmons ride animation we use it to angle away from ben simmons and finish at the basket now with the ball in your left hand quickly tapping the right stick from right to left will actually execute a cradle layup and as you can see right here it doesn't look like much right it looks like a different euro step variation but this layup changes when you're stuck in a contact animation as you can see right here that cradle layup will execute a nice little push off to get you to finish at the basket. And this is exactly how Manu Ginobili or Luka Doncic finish at the basket. Take a look right here as we execute into this ride animation using that cradle layup will push Ben Simmons away and allow us to finish at the basket. So think of guys like Giannis Antetokounmpo or even James Harden who likes to use contact and bully their way to the basket. So as long as you got a high strength rating, you don't need the bully badge to execute these nice bully type contact animations to finish at the basket while using your physicality. So not only are we seeing animations where you finish through your defender, but you can use cradle layups to finish around your defender if you got the first step away from your defender. So this is what I meant by setting traps for your defender. They think they got you when they initiate this ride or contact animation. But actually it's you who's dictating the action and you can finish at the basket at will using cradle layups. Next you want to rotate the right stick to perform a spin layup. Releasing the right stick will result in a quick gather. You can also double tap square while holding the left stick towards the basket as an additional way to execute spin layups. So this one is fairly simple, use your defender's momentum against them as they're moving one direction, spin away from them and finish at the basket. Now another similar technique in which you can use to avoid tight defenses is the hop gather which not many people are using in NBA 2K23. So you want to tap square and hold the left stick to the left or right or double tap the right stick left or right to perform a hop gather. This is a great move to break away from your defender or avoid incoming help defenses and get a different angle to finish at the basket. You can also combo the hop gather with your different sets of floaters or even initiate a hop gather jump stop into a nice fadeaway jumper. Now while moving towards the baseline, you want to hold the right stick away from the basket while driving to the baseline for a reverse layup. So here if I'm approaching towards the right, I want to hold the right stick to the left as I initiate that nice reverse layup. This is a nice way to thwart those incoming shot blockers to use the rim to your advantage because they won't be able to reach you if they're underneath the basket. Now in previous 2Ks, you can combo actually out of your Euro step gather or your cradle layup gather to execute some nice floater combos. But in NBA 2K23, I find the timing window is a little bit small, smaller, so they actually use the different sets of you know layup packages like the Derek Rose layup package to combo your different gathers with floater animations. Another great way you can also combo out of layup gathers is to combo them with dunks. So like if you got Yanis right there, you got a nice signature Euro step dunk animation. Or you can even do a hop step to dunk animation or a cradle layup to dunk combo. So this works really well because you use the different properties of layups, the ability to break out of those contact animations and then finish at the basket with a dunk to avoid getting blocked. So Euro gathers, hop gathers, these are all great tools to use against your defender. So there you have it, the secrets to finishing at the basket, not just relying on those, you know, powerful dunk animations are a little sauce to your game by using these different layups to finish at the basket now you know which types of layups to use in a specific situation just practice with your layup timing buff up your badges and your attributes for finishing at the basket and see how you can dominate at the basket without having to dunk